So this is the third video in our series about making the social distancing simulation with JavaFX sample project idea, demonstrating some of the concepts of connecting the sliders, making a histogram, and moving people around. So what we need to do today is get these people moving and get them bouncing off of the walls. That's what we want to do in this small video. So let's see what we can do with that. So we currently don't have anything in our GUI. <clears throat> we need to start making our uh, JavaFX ML file. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, social sim GUI. Cool. This is rather hard to type, and so we're going to open up Scene Builder. <clears throat> Scene Builder tells us, well, here's our anchor pane. I never like those anchor panes. I prefer those border panes. Easily drops things in the top, left, center, right, and bottom. Okay, so what do we know we need? We need just some basics to get going here. Let's put a label on the top. Let's put a pane in the middle. And we're going to put an H box at the bottom that has a bunch of buttons in it. These buttons are going to be controlling our simulation. So let's put them inside this H box. Okay, button, button button, and last thing is another button. Okay, so reset button, to a start button, a stop button, and a step button. Okay, so that's enough. I'm going to start resizing this H box here, so that's a little too tall layout. How about if you always just use your computed size for the width and for the height? Poof. Okay, so these are down here at the bottom and we can see that they are going to be, you want this to be aligned in the center and then it's going to show up right here. Okay, perfect. I save it. That's enough to get us going. And we go back, look at all those changes. Wonderful. Okay, next thing, we need our app. So, social sim app. And this is a lot to try to figure out and type. So, what do we always do? We go back to our labs and we copy and paste from the sample JavaFX. There's no point in memorizing this. We use it. Poof. But, oh no, I forgot this one. Import that class for application, and this one's supposed to be called Social Sim App. Two things we change here Social Sim App to match our name, and Social Sim GUI. Okay, perfect. Now, let's test it out. We want to run our app and make sure our GUI shows up. Great! That's what we drew and that's what we see. Okay, so next thing we need here is our controller. Social Sim controller. Here we go. Perfect. And let's set up some FXML connections. We definitely want to have a pane. And this is going to be what we called world. We have the initialize function. Public void initialize. There we go. That should be enough to go back to Scene Builder and say, well, set up our controller. We look for it. It's never there. 
We always have to close this down and open it up again. If we open it up in Scene Builder, what do we see? Controller. There's your controller. Yay, we found you. Okay, now we can go back to the hierarchy. Pain. You get to have a cool name. Your name is World. Perfect. And while we're here, why don't I change that up here? Social distancing simulation. Perfect. Now, I always like to have some margin around things. So we got a padding here. Let's put in a padding of five. Spread that everywhere. Everything comes up. Let's give the pane itself some space. And margin around the pane is going to be five again. Spread that everywhere. And then the pane has its own buffer and space around from the buttons and from the label up here. Okay, let's save that. Perfect. Oh, let's not close it. Let's just leave it open. We'll need to come back to that later. But for right now, what can we do? Now, we're tempted to try to do a lot of stuff and initialize, right? We could say we also need to have a simulation. And this simulation, we're going to call it sim. We could say here sim equals new simulation. And what does it take to make a simulation? We need to know the world and we need to know the population size. Let's say there's 100 people. Okay, now if we do that, everything should get drawn in the world. Let's see what happens. We thought they were going to show up everywhere. Why is everybody up here in the left-hand corner? The red dot gets drawn last, the infected person does, and so there are a hundred people here and that, but we, we made sure that they were based on the world size. Well, here's the tricky thing about JavaFX. In initialize, the pane is not inflated. It's not really big. It doesn't know how it sizes, and it comes, it knows it's a pane, but because the, sim the initialize happens before it gets its width and height, right now those are zero. And if we pass those into our simulation, then all the things we're doing down here with, hey, position, make yourself as big as the world, all of this is going to be zero and zero, and we're going to be making this just zero and it's never gonna really work out. Everything's gonna be in the wrong spots. So what we need to do next is set up a way for us to set up the world, not in simulation, but in, or not in initialize, but somewhere else. So let's set it up down here in terms of public void reset. If we do it here, let's see what happens. We have to go back to Scene Builder and say, hey, button, remember you down here, reset. I've got a job for you, code. On action, I want you to call the reset function. Perfect. So that method will get called here. Let's see what happens now. Nobody's there but reset. Oh, they're all in the same spot. Why are you still in the same spot? Did my pain not get big? But it's waiting on it. After initialize, the world should be large enough. And let's just make sure we're actually doing something to it. We are going to be setting up the world's background. Wait, why? Why can't I set background here? There it is. Okay, 
Let's make a new background as we had before. And it's going to make a new background fill color white null and null. Okay. Let's see. Let's see if this fixes our problem. Okay. So if we run it here and reset, oh, everybody's still at zero zero. There must be something wrong with our code. So let's go fix it. Position brings in the world dot get width, subtracts off two times the radius, and then multiplies that by math.random, and then adds back in the radius. Well, we're gonna do some print statements here because something's going wrong. World.getWidth plus the comma plus world.getHeight. Okay. So, oh, you're not happy, are you? Right, because this always has to be the first thing that we call. If we're going to call another constructor, let's see what happens. I should get a bunch of printouts. Whenever I click on reset, everything shows up as it does have that 580, 330. 336, 580. Okay, well, that part's working. Why is this not getting calculated correctly? System.out.printline. That should be happening. And let's do that again because I want to see what the y value is. So now if I run this, I should see a bunch of random numbers. If I see a bunch of zero zeros, then I don't know why. Ah, oh, see, I am, I'm seeing them. 170, 166, 281, 117. Now I'm pretty confident that my position is doing the right thing. So why aren't we seeing them in their right spots? I think I know. So person sets it, adds it to the world, but at this point the circle hasn't been given the right position yet. Okay, so we could draw them here or we could do it back in the simulation to say when things are made, let's draw them. Uh, let's, let's go ahead and do that here. Go ahead, as we call the simulation constructor, we're going to call a draw right at the end of it. Okay. Let's try to run it again. Oh, we found it. Okay, they're showing up everywhere. This is perfect. Okay, and we set. Can we? We drew them again. And again. Well, that's a lot of people reset. Well, the idea of the word is to reset, not add new things. We're going to have to fix that. So that's a lot of people. So what we can do inside our controller is to go back and say, well, before we do this, we are going to have to clean everybody out. We're going to say, you need to get rid of things in the world. World. Get children. Clear. Everything's going to disappear from the pane. The pane won't have any of those circles left behind, and then the simulation will be able to add them. Okay, let's see if this does a proper reset. Ah! People are now in random positions every time. Good. Okay, now, just to verify, I'm, the first thing I thought was the problem, let's try to do it inside initialize. 
There we see them all hanging out up here. I should have known something was different because we still had the radius and the math.random in there, but they're all hanging out right up here at that spot because zero came in. But, well, reset doesn't do anything right now. Because it is, like I was thinking first, the world doesn't have a width or a height. It only has it after it's been made. We still do need the reset down here. Okay, great. Now let's see if we can get them to move a little bit. So let's make another one. fxml public void step. It's going to be, I want the simulation to move everybody, and then I want them to all get drawn again. Great. We need to go back here and say, hey, step button. You need to have a new thing. So I can't find the FX ID down here. That's okay, but the action, aha, there it is, step. Save it, run it. What do we get? Look at them moving. Everybody moves, but they fly away. Okay, next video, we fix that.